Okay, let's talk the great whore of Babylon. Let's go to the scripture first. Revelation 17, verse 1, as always, all my scriptures, King James Version Bible. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. <coughs> Does Rome, Italy sit upon many waters? No. Does Iraq? No. Okay. Revelation chapter 17, verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. What is the most popular, mighty, strong, traded with, still revered, even though it's, it's a piece of garbage nowadays, nation of the world? America. Sodom and Gomorrah. Revelation 17, verse 9. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which a woman sitteth. Now, first of all, it doesn't say seven hills. It says seven mountains. Rome is a city that sits on seven hills. And what wisdom would it take to say that the seven mountains where the woman sits is Rome? I'm getting ready to just blow you out of the water with scripture that shows you the great whore of Babylon is America. But check this out. The United States of America, now Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah too, happens to have seven major mountain ranges five major mountain ranges two sub major mountain ranges so if, if someone was looking looking in the future prophetically like john was and he looked and saw the united states he could very easily see a city that sat on seven mountains because we have seven major mountain ranges in this nation that takes wisdom my friends research it five major and two sub major now let's go to revelation 18 9 to 19. And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her, when they see the smoke of her burning. That's us. The, the, all the world deals with America. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Rome is not a mighty city. Iraq is not mighty. They're not going to be mighty, period. This is a mighty nation, which we looked at as, as a city in prophetic eyes from long ago. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood thine, thine wood and all manner of I vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. That fits America to the T. And the fruits of thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, which thou shalt find no more at all. Again, this has nothing to do with Babylon, with, with Iraq, or with Rome, Italy. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. They've been made rich by her because we are an importing nation. We used to be a major export nation. I'll cover that more later. Saying, Alas, alas, that great city, which was clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and decked with gold, and precious stones and pearls. This is a, this is a royal nation. It, 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 it was birthed from a royal nation from, from England. And the fine linen and purple and scarlet and gold and precious stones and pearls are all over the wealth of this nation. For in one hour so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood far off. Now. Is there a lot of, uh, is uh, Rome, Italy surrounded by sea? No. Is Iraq surrounded by sea? No. Is the United States of America surrounded by sea? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. We're surrounded by sea and many, many fresh waters as well, the Great Lakes. And cry when they saw the smoke of a burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? Nothing is like America. This is considered the place in the world. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reasons of her costliness for in one hour she is made desolate okay we went through the scripture in revelation now let's get into the meat let's talk about the great whore the bible calls this unnamed nation babylon and sometimes refers to it as the daughter of babylon again we were birthed from england we're a daughter we're not the actual original babylon in iraq we're a daughter of babylon these characteristics of Babylon are taken from verses in Jeremiah 
5051, Isaiah 1847, Revelation 1718. These scriptures record a fascinating description of a nation that has much wisdom, wealth, and knowledge, thinks it's secure and invincible, but is suddenly totally destroyed. Who does that sound like to you, my friends? I'll tell you who it is. It's America. <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize for the tea. I have to throw it as dry. All right, let's break down what the scripture says. The great whore of Babylon is bordered by many waters. Again, Rome, Italy is not. Iraq is not. O you who dwell by many waters, Jeremiah 51, 13. The sea has come up over Babylon. She has been engulfed with its tumultuous waves, Jeremiah 51, 42. This is a nation bordered by many waters. Later you will see it's also imports primarily by ships. It's important to note that Babylon and Iraq has two relatively small ports on only one ocean. In comparison, the U.S. is virtually surrounded by water. It has less than, no less than 15 major ports on three oceans, five Great Lakes, and the Mississippi River. <laughs> this country is bordered by many waters. The rest of them, forget it. The great whore Babylon has a mother nation. Your mother will be greatly ashamed. She who gave you birth will be humiliated. Behold, she will be the youngest of the nations, Jeremiah 50:12. This nation, America, has a mother nation. Like the U.S., the Great Horde Babylon has a mother nation. Like the U.S. has a mother nation, Great Britain. And this nation is the youngest of the world superpowers at the end of the church age. Think about it. Perfect match. The Great Horde Babylon, two for two. The Great Horde Babylon will be militarily strong. Actually, three for three, including seven mountains. How the hammer of the whole earth has been cut off and broken, Jeremiah 50, 23. He says, you are my war club, my weapon of war, Jeremiah 51, 20. This nation is the military hammer of the earth, a large importing nation. This nation right here, Sodom and Gomorrah, U.S., is the military hammer of the earth, my friends, four for four. The great whore Babylon will be a large importing nation. Come to her from the farthest border, open up her barns, Jeremiah 50, 26, and the merchants of the earth weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore, Revelation 18, 11. This nation used to be the biggest exporting nation when we were strong. Since Clinton was in office, we have sent all of our jobs overseas. We are now the big, one of the biggest importing nations in the entire world. Importing nations fall to pieces like ancient Rome did. Rome, Italy is not a, a great importing nation. Neither is Baghdad, Iraq. This nation is the large, again, large importing nation. Not even close. A wealthy nation. <laughs> All who had ships at sea became rich by her wealth. This nation, even though we're all messed up, is still very, very wealthy. Revelation 18, 19. Such great wealth. Revelation 18, 17. The great whore of Babylon is agriculturally abundant, wealthy, has worldwide influence, and is a large importing nation via the sea. All those things I just covered. Fits us to a T. And the great whore of Babylon is an educated nation. <laughs> A sword against it, her wise men. Jeremiah 50, 35. This nation is very, very educated. Right now, the Chinese, the Japanese, all other countries are sending their brightest kids over to this country. This country might fall behind in some things like the math and science and certain testing, but this is, this is still the most educated nation in the entire world, hands down. Rome, Italy, and Iraq, and the Great Horde Babylon will have population diversity. A sword against all the foreigners who are in the midst of her. Jeremiah 50, 37. This nation is full of foreigners, legal and illegal. The King James Version calls it a mingled people nation. The U.S. is about as mingled as a nation can get. We are diverse beyond diverse. Forget Italy, forget Iraq. The Great Horde of Babylon is the United States of America. The Great Horde of Babylon will be abundant in natural resources. Oh, yeah. A sword against her treasures, Jeremiah 50, 37b. Abundant in treasures. This nation is very abundant in all natural resources and treasures. We are very rich with all that stuff. The great whore Babylon had been blessed by God. Also a nation full of idols. Her images have been put to shame. Her idols have been shattered. Jeremiah 52d. It is a land of graven images, and they are mad upon their idols. Jeremiah 50, 38. The nation in question has a lot of images. 
How would Isaiah, Isaiah describe TV, movies, or the internet 3,000 years ago? In any way you as images is what he would is what he would define them as. In any way you define idol, the United States is full of idols. The idol is anything you put before God: money, cars, sex, TV, football, pornography, self, etc. Would certainly qualify as idols. Amazingly, one of the top TV shows in the United States is called American Idol. We have a magazine titled Self. If the shoe fits, wear it. This nation fits to the T. We were formerly blessed by God. We are a nation of idols. And this nation is still blessed by God compared to the rest of the world. This is the great whore, my friends. There is zero doubt about that at all. No doubt. The great whore Babylon will have a space program. Though Babylon, through Babylon, should ascend to the heavens. Jeremiah 51, 53. If that's a reference to this nation taking space shots, it certainly narrows the field of prospective countries that could qualify. You can forget the other ones that I mentioned. The great whore Babylon has become arrogant. <laughs> For she's become arrogant against the Lord, against the Holy One of, of Israel. Jeremiah 50, 29. Behold, I am against you, O arrogant one, declares the Lord of hosts. For your day has come, the time when I will punish you. Jeremiah 50, 31. This nation has become arrogant against the Lord, indicating that at one time the nation was once humble to the Lord. Yeah, we used to be very humble. Not just arrogant against God, but strictly arrogant against Jesus Christ. This nation hates Jesus Christ. Our president hates Jesus Christ and God. The Holy One of Israel. Maybe the 50 million deaths of innocent babies via abortion, now over 60 million, pornography distribution center of the world, and taking God out of the classroom had something to do with it. You can bank on it. The great whore of Babylon will be the daughter of Babylon. Against you, O daughter of Babylon. Jeremiah 50:42. This nation is also referred to as a daughter of Babylon. Not the original Babylon, but another country. The great whore of Babylon will be attacked from the north. A nation has come up against her out of the north. Jeremiah 53. For the destroyers will come to her from the north. Jeremiah 51:48. The nation is attacked from the north. Interestingly, Russia, Gog, is aligned with Iran, Persia, in the Ezekiel 38-39 post-rapture invasion of Israel. If the U.S. did receive a nuclear attack from Russia or from North Korea, it would come to the United States over the North Pole from the north. The U.S. could be the coastlands, Ezekiel 39-6, who also get attacked in the Gog invasion. The Great Horror of Babylon. Rapture related? At the shout, Babylon has been seized, the earth is shaken, and an outcry is heard among the nations. Jeremiah 50, 46. This shout might be in reference to the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. Indicating it is still a future event, the earth will definitely be shaken at the rapture. So who knows? Maybe at the rapture, the United States, the great horror, gets destroyed then. That's a possibility. God allowed luxury, culture, and industry. The fruit you long for has gone from you, and all the things that were luxurious and splendid have passed away from you, and men will no longer find them. Revelation 18, 14. And the sound of harpists and musicians and flute players and trumpeters will not be heard in you any longer. And no craftsman of any craft will be found in you any longer. And the sound of a mill will not be heard in you any longer. Revelation 18.22 Babylon has been a golden cup in the hand of the Lord, intoxicating all the earth. The nations have been drunk on her wine. Jeremiah 51.7 nation, This nation lives in luxury and splendor with many musicians, craftsmen, and mills, factories. It's quite an advanced nation, allowed by God himself. Sodom and Gomorrah, United States, is a great whore, my friends. The great whore, again, worldwide merchants. Your, merchand your merchants <coughs> excuse me, were the great men of the earth, Revelation 18.23. This nation reaches the far corners of the earth with her dominating trade. Definitely us. The great whore's destruction happens without warning. Suddenly Babylon has fallen and been broken, Jeremiah 51.8. For in one hour such great wealth has been laid waste. Revelation 18.17 These things shall come on you suddenly in one day. Isaiah 47.9 Destruction about which you do not know will come on you suddenly. Isaiah 47.11 Suddenly could be another reference to the rapture or possibly a post-rapture nuclear attack that takes place in this nation. The phrase in one hour could also be translated in a moment. The Greek word used here, hora, was translated moment in two other places in the Bible, so it could be a reference to the rapture or a nuke explosion. The great whore has good and bad. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. At the time it is stamped firm, yet in a little while the time of harvest will come for her. Jeremiah 51, 33. 
This nation is compared to a threshing floor. It is a nation that for the moment has both good and bad people, but eventually God promises to come and get the good, cleansed by Jesus' blood, at the rapture. The great whore has lots of whirring. Alas, O land of whirring wings. Isaiah 18.1 This nation has a lot of whirring going on. Airplanes, helicopters, and other engines make a whirring sound. That's us to a T. Sends diplomats worldwide, which sends diplomats, which sends envoys by the sea, even in papyrus vessels, on the surface of the waters, go swift messengers to a nation tall and smooth, to a people feared far and wide, a powerful and oppressive nation whose land the rivers divide, Isaiah 18.2. This end time nation sends diplomats around the world, is considered tall and smooth, is known worldwide as plenty of water due to many rivers dividing the land. So for those that insist Babylon must be rebuilt in Iraq to fulfill Bible prophecy, I submit Iraq doesn't fit the above scriptures at all. Iraq is not bordered on many waters. It's not the world's military hammer. It's not full of wise men. It's not a mingled people nation. It's not the world's largest importer. It's not a new young nation. It does not have plenty of water and certainly does not take space shots. This nation, whoever it is, is wiped out in one hour, either by the rapture or a nuclear attack soon after the rapture. Could this be the United States, with the church gone and nothing but liberal non-believers left, and God's perfect timing, it sure seems to fit. All right, my friends, anyone who can't, who listens to this, like my video I just did on Barack Christine Obama being the Antichrist, anyone who listens to what I just told you and still thinks the great whore of Babylon is Rome, Italy, or Iraq, you guys are out of your minds. I'm sorry, you're spiritually ignorant, you're biblically ignorant. So here's the question you have to ask yourself. Those of you who are backslidden Christians, do you want to stay backslidden and stay on your high haughty horse and refuse to repent and take the chance that that at, at the rapture this nation will be destroyed, like the Bible says, or shortly after by a nuclear explosion? It's going to be laid, laid to waste, period. Do you want to take that risk? Because you're not going to be saved when you're left behind. You'll be backslidden. And if you die from a nuclear explosion or from whatever God calls us to destroy us instantly, you wake up in hell, my friends. And all of you who are not saved by Jesus Christ's blood, the same question. Do you want to face that fate or ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? I'm going to pray a prayer of salvation in a minute. I want you to pray with me if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Let's pray. Jesus, I pray that you would wake people up. Just wake them up. Help them to see what's going on. Help them to understand what the Scripture shows. I used to believe all the lies men told me about Rome, Italy being the great whore, about, ba about Iraq, Babylon, Iraq being the great whore, Babylon. Oh, no. I know who the great whore of Babylon is now, and I know who the Antichrist is. I pray people would wake up and understand the truth before it's too late. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior or you're backslidden, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day, went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of, of the Father God. And since that time, you've been making a place in heaven for all your children forever. Please forgive me of my sins. Jesus, wash my heart white as snow. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. Now the Bible says when you pray that prayer, Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. And when you get saved, to get your King James Version Bible, it's the living, breathing Word of God. The way you feed your body with food and water every day, this Bible will feed your spirit and soul if you read it daily. Pray to Jesus every day. He's your new best friend. He loves you. He wants to talk to you every single day. Get water baptized in a Christian church as soon as possible. If you've been immersed, if you've been sprinkled baptized before, it doesn't count. Do it over again, my friends. Pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit from head to toe. It's called being sanctified. You get that way by reading the Bible, by praying, by living for Jesus every day. Take that King James Version Bible I told you about the church. When the pastor preaches, when I preach, anyone does. You open that Bible and you compare what we say to it. If it don't match, you close your Bible, you walk out of church immediately, you unfriend, you unsubscribe, you run as fast as you can. Because anyone who would lie to you, in Jesus' name, anyone who would lie to you about what God's own word says will drag you to hell, my friends. If you have questions, comments, concerns, you want me to pray for anything, from a terminal illness to a sick pet, anything in between, contact me. I have the gift of faith, mustard seed faith. I didn't earn it or deserve it, praise the Lord, but I prayed for it. He gave it to me. And I've seen thousands of miracles, my friends, on my ministries. Thousands of miracles, people I've prayed for, God has performed miracles, all because of Him, not me. And I will pray for you if you ask me to. And I know that God will perform those miracles if they're within His holy will. And again, if He does... It's all through Him. His praise, honor, glory, power, might, majesty, strength, love, compassion, mercy, kindness, tenderness, gentleness, understanding. Nothing to do with me. I'm the least in God's kingdom, a tiny fish in a huge ocean, a slave for Jesus Christ. Please share the link to this channel, this video, with friends, neighbors, co-workers, loved ones, with strangers. Drop it in a blog. Plant the seed and walk away. Let God water it so it can grow. 
The cotton candy powder puff syrupy fluff garbage you hear all over churches, all over the internet, is a word that leads right down to hell. The word that points you to heaven, to the cross of Jesus Christ, where the Holy Spirit can gently kneel you, Jesus Christ can wash away your sins with his precious blood and save your soul, is a King James Version Bible, verse chapter book, cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, and the way I teach it here. Not because I'm anything, it's God's everything. I love you guys, I pray for you every day, and may God bless you. Thanks. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.